Hi there. Greetings, Facebook friends. Amazing women who lead with heart. Greetings and hello. Welcome to day two of my Positivity Challenge Week. It's Tuesday and I'm coming on live and I'm here for you. If you're warming up to me, if you're here live, send me a note, wave hi, throw me an emoji. If you're watching on replay, give me a hashtag replay so I know who is out here in the world. It is time for us to connect. Uh, we are connected beings and uh, even in this disconnected shelter and home time, we need to feel that connection and so do I. So send me an emoji, throw me a hashtag replay to let me know that you are joining me in some way. Today is day two of our positivity challenge and I'm so excited to come on live. Yesterday, I talked a lot about thoughts and how we can flip the current stream of thought that we are consumed in if it's negative, how we can find a higher vibration thought, a, a better feeling thought. And I thought of some more things about that before I dive into today, which is all about action. I want to talk about a little bit more about perspective shifts. This, uh, the whole arc of these um, meetings this week are talking about how where your attention goes, energy flows. And that which you focus on expands. That which you notice, which you feed, which you give attention to is what will grow. And so your first follow-up challenge from yesterday about thoughts is this. I want you to think about four particular things and a different frame of thought for each one. Okay, you ready? So there, here's one. If you find yourself falling into the gutter ball of despair and of feeling disappointed about everything that you can't do right now, I want you to write a list of everything that you can do. This is like a little mental exercise for you to find a a more positive channel of thought. You are sort of like shoulder shaking yourself saying, I can stay in the energy of everything I can't do, but I'm also going to acknowledge everything that I can. So I'll start first. I can't go to San Diego with my kids for spring break. And I'm bummed about that. I like to surf. I like to be in the ocean. I love to see the sunset. It brings me up. It makes me feel alive. It's a beautiful family time. And I really grieved that. I really felt bummed about that. But you know what? There are lots of things that I can do. I can. I live in a state where we're not so um, shelter in place that we, we can go for a hike. We can go for a walk. And we live in a beautiful, natural state. We can walk in the park. We can do any number of other things to be outside and enjoy the beauty and the expansiveness of nature. And so I can write a whole long list of, you know, without even stopping the pen on the paper of all the things that I can do. And that's what I challenge you to do. If you are consumed with all the things that are closed, I want to challenge you to think of all the things that are open. I was beating myself up that at this time when my kids are out of school, first of all, they were homeschooled and now they're on spring break, that I didn't get my ass to the library in time to get books. And I'm so bummed, like we're out of books. And I thought, well, I can be really frustrated that the libraries are closed, but I can also see all that is open. It's unbelievable to me all that is available. You can still order food online and have it delivered to your house. The best restaurant in the United States for Mexican food is called the Red Iguana. Do you guys know it? If you're from the Salt Lake City area, you know Red Iguana. They'll deliver their amazing food to your house for free if your order is $50 or more. I'm like, I can do that. It's easy to spend that kind of money. So think about all that's open. That's your second challenge. If you're thinking about the lack and everything that is missing or scarce or, or unavailable, the challenge is to think of everything that is abundant. And this one can be very broad. This can really open you up. Uh, this one is particularly useful if you're looking at um, the lack of income that you used to have that is now no longer there because the stock market is tanking or you're laid off and your income is drastically reduced. It's so easy to fall into lack and scarcity mindset and feel like, oh my God, I have so much less than what I had before. 
Now is the time for you to see how abundant your life is. Think of all of the things that you have acquired in your life of hard value that are still yours. They're still here. And think of all of the things that are priceless that are still here, that are still of um, totally under your roof, under your um, capability to experience you are abundant. It might take a little time to find it, but to focus your thoughts on all that it is available to you, that all is here. And then the last thing, this is a follow-up from yesterday, talking about how you can flip your thoughts and notice when you're falling into real gutter ball negative thoughts and bring them up to positive. The fourth thing is if you find yourself falling into negativity and just think thinking or consuming thoughts or information that really bring you down and make you feel negative and pessimistic and downer, it's to choose a more positive thought. And in this one, I want to give you guys an example about how boundaries are really important. Many of you have already commented how you got to shut off the news from time to time. The news consumes negativity and, and then spreads it about. The, the fascinating and gripping and hair-raising stories usually are based in fear. The, um, the things that catch people's attention is what keeps the news channels alive. They, they, the agenda of news is to keep you tuned in because that's how they make money. So know that. Know that it's not just a public service and only consume what you need. You need to know what the recommendations are. You need to know if there are restrictions in your neighborhood. You need to know if there are new laws in place. You might need some baseline information, but you do not have to feast on the negativity that is in the news. That that is, a, that is actually a lot of fear mongering. And there, is words, there are words out there now talking about how we're at war. They don't talk about how we're at war in crusading for peace and health. The words are, we are at war against death and a virus. That kind of negativity is toxic and will infect you and affect your not just your mood, but your whole well-being. And so I really challenge you to get some boundaries around how much negativity you will consume. You following me? I want to tell you maybe a funny story. Um, many of you know my husband, and uh, you may not know that he's a politico. He just loves, he was a history major, so he loves history and politics and the intrigue and the stories, and he loves to digest this, and it's fascinating for him. I don't. I don't enjoy it. I don't love it. I don't feast upon it. So this morning, he gets up early and he goes and watches his news feeds or whatever he does and he makes coffee and I'm busy working on my mindset. I'm working on preparing for you. I'm working on finding the positivity. I'm working on thinking about where I'm abundant, where I, where I have things that are open, what I can do, all of this. He comes back in the room with a cup of coffee and sits on the bed and proceeds to tell me a story about how coronavirus really started in Europe and how it wasn't really based in Northern Italy, it actually was based in a bar. I don't know if you guys have heard this story, and I'm not gonna feed it. But he was just fascinated about how it was this international bar where this, these bar games were going on and germs were being spread and that people from all over the world were there and then they scattered to, you know, not all over the world, but all over Europe. And that's how the coronavirus really started to take place. And I just, just silent. I was just sitting there feeling like this shift in energy between like where I was milking the positive feelings and sort of wanting my attention to go and my energy to flow. And then this onslaught incoming that was not what I had invited, but was there in my bedroom. And he kind of sort of jokingly said like, oh, well, that's interesting, Paul, like feeding my side of the conversation since I wasn't participating. And I said, how does this help my life? How does this add to my life? You coming in here this morning, early in the morning, still dark outside, to give me this. And he, he said, well, at least I didn't invoke the name of our president, which he knows is also a do not fly zone. Like I'm not interested in coming home from work and entering my kitchen and having um, a certain political figure in my kitchen 
on the news. It is a request that I have made that he understands. So boundary setting is a really important thing for you to do. This is what I'm talking about right now, to encourage your thoughts to stay out of the gutter and straight on down the alley. You may have to ask people in your life that they, that they need to respect a certain boundary. And if they want to discuss news with you, they have to ask permission first. Or if they want to watch news with, you know, it has to be in a certain part of the house. Um, or if somebody calls you and they want to talk about um, how shitty and awful and crappy everything is, they need to ask permission first. You get to say that. You get to be in charge of your news feed. And sometimes your news feed comes unasked for from your from sources of uh, your your friend group, your family group, people in your house. So I wanted to offer that for perspective shifts that if you want your attention to go where you want your energy to flow, the things that you want to grow, you want to actually build some walls around the things that you don't need to have in your life. Are we good? Do you like that? That's sort of like a little bit more on what uh, we talked about yesterday yesterday about controlling your thoughts, about finding a better feeling thought, about flipping something negative and finding something positive. All right, so let's dive into the topic today. Another way that you can find a more positive perspective, another way that you can take agency in your own life to find a more positive way of being is, you ready? Action. It's through action. We are wired to move. We are movement beings. So let me just kind of spend a little time expanding on that. <clears throat> Our natural state is to grow and to evolve. We do it effortlessly, right? Did you have to wake up this morning and think, oh, I need to breathe in and breathe out? Oh, I need to tell my heart to go lub dub, lub dub. Oh, I need my cells to reproduce. I need the mitochondria to be um, producing energy. I need to make sure the oxygen that comes in is transferred and creates carbon dioxide and breathe it out. No, this is effortless. This is living. This is what our bodies are wired to do. We are energy. We have processes that are completely automatic. We have things that we don't have to do for our whole body to work. It's fascinating. I love thinking about it. I love thinking about how your fingernails grow. You don't have to work on it. So does your hair. Never mind that your, um, your roots grow out and so do your eyebrows. But it's part of the abundance of life is that things march forward. And we are built to evolve. We are built to grow. We are built to reproduce. We are built to have all of our functions while we're alive happen nearly effortlessly. And it's a beautiful thing to just contemplate that, that we are wired for action at the cellular level and then on out to the thought level. Action is a human condition. It's also in the natural world as well. So I had posted in my um, group earlier this week this amazing time-lapse photo. Send me an emoji if you saw it. It's of plants springing to life from seeds germinating, then bursting into photosynthetic life. And some of the plants are just astounding to witness, especially with a time-lapse video. If that's something that you haven't seen yet, you'll have to scan back in, in my group to go look at it or I'll repost it again. But it's just so uplifting to see that the natural state of life is to expand, to grow, to make something out of nothing. It's fascinating to me. So it's, uh, it's something that, that I want to talk about with how our natural state is abundant. And abundance means to multiply, to grow, to be um, ever bringing more. I mean, isn't it a, doesn't it blow you away that a tree comes from a seed? It's, it's something that, it's like those miracles that we just take for granted that is so worth taking notice of because it's the miracle of your own life too, that you started as a cell and look who you are now. It's unbelievable. And those kinds of perspectives can really help you shift um, in a foundational way from scarcity, lack, fear, depression, 
um, negativity to a vastly different perspective of all that is possible for you. All that is available to you that you don't even have to work hard to make. So there is um, a whole wisdom tradition about abundance, about uh, energy that I want to talk about in terms of action. And sort of the, the, the ways that we can think about it is energy like flows without resistance, it flows faster. With resistance, it flows slower. And so you can think about your own life. Where do you have flowing energy? Where do you have abundant energetic flow in your life as opposed to resistance? And what gives you flow? So let's just like take it from this, you know, conceptual sort of like mindset thing to like real life. Uh, we can talk about flow being water, that water moves. Water, the properties of water is that one is that it moves, that tides shift, that rain falls, that lakes fill to the point that waterfalls become, that rivers are fueled and creeks, Water is a beautiful image, metaphor, and signal for flow in our own life. So if you're able to see water flowing as energy, and then also think about all the other metabolic, natural processes that demonstrate similar flow, like that video that I posted in my group of seeds germinating and becoming flowers, of nature thriving, of weather occurring, of seasons changing, this is all part of the global natural flow of things that you can tap into, especially if you're falling into negativity and you need to plug into a more positive mindset. That all of those things exist without our spurring them on or trying to make them not happen. That the natural flow is to become and evolve and to be. It's a beautiful perspective to hold that gives you some relief. You don't have to try to do anything to make the waterfalls fall. You don't have to try to do anything to have the seasons change. It's not your job. And I love that perspective because it just feels like some sweet relief that all I have to worry about is pure positive thought and how I'm going to contribute to a broader perspective of positivity and potential and fulfilling my potential. Are you still following me? Are you with me? So if you're in that channel of all the things that are evolving and becoming, becoming and if you are seeing that we are physical beings of cells reproducing, of energy flowing, of breathing in and out, of blood beating through our veins and our heart, of having the lub dub of our hearts, of having the exhale and inhale of our lungs, of having all of these metabolic processes be um, unconscious and ever abundant during our lifetime, it is true then we want to think about how that action can be further demonstrated through our mindset and through our perspective. So this whole talk is actually about taking action, being physical, because you are a physical being. You can touch yourself, you can, you, you know all of these functions are true, right? So here's the thing inside your body, fear, is physical. Fear is a chemical reaction that happens either starting in your adrenal glands or in your brain that cycles through your body. It is a physical action that you are experiencing. Fear. Even if it is just a thought, like say it's a nightmare and you wake up startled, sweating, heart pounding, um, terrible racing thoughts, a panic stricken through your body, you're having a physical experience to a thought. So recognize that all of those things that are happening for you that are bringing you down, the negativity, the 
um, seeing what you can't do, the feeling of scarcity, the feeling of lack, the feeling of, of um, potentially things falling apart, the worry. It's all a chemical reaction that you are producing inside your body. Maybe you can think of how this could be true because less sentient beings may not be afraid because they're not churning that chemical. They're not capable of producing thoughts that become physical. Are you guys following me? You can think about um, an innocent baby incapable of feeling this cognizant level of fear if you're worried about your 401k eroding or your job um, being taken away. Those are layers of thought that you have been able to expand into with maturity that other living beings are not yet capable of feeling. You can focus your energy to be more of that neutrality or even positivity way of being. So if fear is chemical, if fear is physical and chemical, it's something that's produced in your body, a worry is actually a thought that you just keep swirling around a point of fear. And you can get yourself quite worked up physically in fear. Then you can find the physical opposite of that. You can find the expansion that is also physical. There are physical experiences that are documented, that are uh, measured, like a runner's high, more endorphins flowing through the body, or a mother nursing her child, oxytocin overflowing in her body as a physical response to being connected to her baby. There's so many other feel-good chemicals. Serotonin is that zap that makes you feel on it, powerful, uh, uh, winning. It is a chemical that is initiated in your brain that gives you a feeling. So fear and expansion, negativity and positivity are actually physical actions occurring in your body. And you can have agency over them. You can switch them. You can control which one you're falling into through physical action that you take. So let's talk about that. It's, you can do anything from soothing to stimulating to encourage the good chemicals that you want to have flowing through your body to help your perspective shift from negative to positive, to find a more positive point of view. So what feels good? That's the whole thing. What feels good? I want you to actually write in the comments below, what feels good? Almost physically, like make a list. There's your challenge. Make a list of all the things that physically feel good. I feel good when I stretch. I feel good when I take a deep breath like I just did. I feel good when I laugh out loud. I feel good when I take a bath. I feel good when I use my lavender oil in the shower or my scrub. I feel good when I get a hug for my kid. I feel good when um, I do yoga. I feel good when I'm outside and feeling expansive of spirit. I feel good when I sprint and my heart is beating really hard and I feel alive. Just this is like a rampage of what you can do physically of action that makes you feel good. Because all of those actions that you're thinking of, whether they're soothing or stimulating, are those th you're, you're doing something inside your body that's creating a physical response to uh, um, create the chemicals that lead to you feeling so much more positive, right? So um, why don't you take this as the challenge of what three actions can you take to lift you into a more positive state? Think about um, the fact that your skin is the largest organ in your body and you have so much of it and it's, it, it's all accessible to you. Um, you can, you can feel, you can tickle your kid. I just had a great tickle fight with my kid last night. Um, we were playing basketball in our backyard, which is another thing that feels good is to, um, be completely unconscious to news and world events and fears when I'm trying to score on my kid. And when we're blocking really hard, I mean, we were playing really hard out there, 
boys versus adults, mom and dad versus boy and boy. And guess who won? The kids did. Damn. But we were like sweaty, breathing hard, laughing, um, you know, blowing it because we were so at our limit of physicality. We were taking such massive action that we're like, you know, at our limits, breathing hard, shooting hard, running hard, blocking hard. And, um, and also I must admit that I can sort of take liberties with rules and I like to do my tickle defense, which is when my kids try to shoot, if I tickle them, they usually make, um, they miss it. But, um, but like having fun, right? Like laughter is really good medicine. So what makes you laugh? What makes you giggle? What gives you joy? What gives you um, great pleasure? That is the lesson today is to find those actions that you can take that put you into a positive state. So I've talked a lot about exercise, but there are other actions that you can take too. You can tidy your environment and it feels good. You can fold all the clothes. You can wash the windows. You can um, do any number of things that make you feel like there's some order and pleasure in your physical environment. Those are actions you can take. You can cook food. You can make cards. You can, I mean, you guys tell me all of the wonderful actions that you've heard of other people taking or that you're considering taking or that you're promoting or that you're doing that feed that beautiful sense of like putting another twig on the campfire of your soul of positivity. Great action to take. Gardening is another one that's so wonderful. So, um, and if you still are having difficulty finding that pure positive point of view, just make it really simple. Find something really, really simple that gives you pleasure. Because if you try to go from here to like this high vibe, you might feel like you stumble on the way or you argue with yourself because there's too much um, resistance between where you're at and where maybe I'm preaching that you could be. And just find something that's more simple. Honestly, if you can just reflect on the the things that are right before you, like the a beautiful flower or the sunshine on your face or your favorite song or a delightful meal or a, a, a warm shower or bath, the simple, simple things that can just soothe you or reassure you that beauty and abundance are all about you that you can feel better physically through taking action will help lift you into a positive state. So that's what I've got for our day two of how to find a more positive perspective. I'd love to hear your thoughts, share them below, and I'll see you same time tomorrow. Go well.